Work has begun to bring back an old park to life. An area high school gets a new principal, and local readers are invited to an adventurous party later this week. Lower temperatures today across East Alabama, but we are about to heat right back up. We'll have the complete forecast coming up. Coming up in sports, Etowah High School football team hosted Ohatchee in Pleasant Valley today for an OTA. We have more on that in just a minute as EAN Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. Hello, we're glad you could join us. I'm Mike Stadham. And I'm Katie Edwards. Gadsden police arrested an armed man at the city's public library this morning without incident following a domestic violence call in the nearby high-rise. Officers say they received a 9-11 call at approximately 11.47 this morning to the 15th floor of Tower 7 on Walnut Street. The caller reported that a man had a gun. The Gadsden Patrol Division and the Street Crimes Unit secured the building and learned that the suspect had fled, but a heavy police presence remained at the area. A tip from a concerned citizen led Gadsden Police to the suspect at the Gadsden Public Library where he was taken into custody without incident. Police say their investigation is ongoing. On Tuesday morning, the Gadsden Police Department caught a robbery suspect less than 45 minutes after receiving a 911 call from the McDonald's on North 12th Street. The caller provided a detailed description of the suspect and added that he had fled the scene in a blue Kia Soul. The robbery call was received at 1044 and by 1127, Gadsden detectives had located and pulled over the suspect's vehicle. The suspect, identified as Donovan Alexander Beavers, was arrested and is currently in the Etowah County Detention Center facing an attempted robbery charge. Tyler Park has been at the heart of East Anniston's social and recreational life for decades. Once the site of a city swimming pool and tennis courts, the park is now going to be converted into a walking trail and recreational space by the RMC Foundation. The group held a groundbreaking ceremony this morning to mark the beginning of the first phase of the revitalization effort. RMC President and CEO Lewis Bass says the facility will serve both the staff of the hospital and its patients. It will also be available to the community around the hospital. Legina Fillingham, the director of RMC Foundation, says the park will also give the community a chance to honor its past. We're going to do lighting and the one thing that I didn't talk about is we're going to do park benches so everybody that uh, in the community, you can actually purchase a bench in honor or memory of someone that you love and it'll be there for longevity. So I think that's great. Now, Phil and Jim says the first phase of the park will be the walking trail, which she says they hope to have ready by late September or early October. The next phase will be putting up lights throughout the park and eventually turning part of it into a green space where families can gather and children can play. The renovation is being paid for by the foundation, which holds fundraising events to support RMC's work. When we come back, a veteran educator takes the reins at a local high school. Spring into freshness at WM. Celebrate the season with our bountiful selection of farm fresh produce. From juicy berries to crisp greens, taste the flavors of spring at WM. Visit us today and let the freshness bloom in every bite. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. Seth Taylor, who has been a teacher and school administrator for more than 15 years, has been selected as the new principal of Oxford High School. The appointment was made by the Oxford Board of Education at a meeting this morning. Taylor, who holds degrees from Jacksonville State University, Auburn University at Montgomery, and the University of West Alabama, began his education career as a math teacher at Munford Middle School, B.B. Comer High School, and later Jacksonville High School. Taylor was named assistant principal at Lincoln High School in 2016 and has since served as principal of Munford High School, Pleasant Valley High School, and Sachs High School. 
He's currently pursuing a doctorate in instructional leadership from the University of Alabama. EAN News sat down with Taylor to talk about his plans for the future of Oxford High School. We'll have that interview for tomorrow on tomorrow's newscast. When we return, future business leaders will get some expert advice later this week. For metal buildings in Alabama and the Southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. The Calhoun County Chamber of Commerce is gearing up for its second annual Youth Entrepreneur Expo scheduled for Friday from 9 a.m. to noon at Chambers headquarters. This event aims to support and encourage aspiring business owners between the ages of 8 and 18. The Expo offers participants a platform to showcase their businesses and entrepreneurial ideas. It also includes a pre-Expo training session where each participant will be paired with a business mentor. This session will cover topics such as marketing strategies, financial management, and business registration, providing professional guidance to young entrepreneurs. The event is sponsored by Gadsden State Community College, the Civilian Markmanship Program, and AOD Federal Credit Union. Young entrepreneurs can pre-register for the Expo on the Chamber's website. The Oxford Public Library will host Indiana Jones Adventure Day on Friday to celebrate the end of its Summer Reading Program 2024. The festivities will culminate with a party at noon. The Indiana Jones Adventure Day promises to be filled with activities inspired by the fictitious archaeologist. Participants can look forward to treasure hunts, artifact discoveries, and themed games that bring the spirit of adventure to life. The library will honor all the young readers who've completed their reading goals and participated in the summer program. Well, Mike, it seems like all we had to do was mention the humidity yesterday, and it's almost like John Holder just turned it down a little bit. Well, at that groundbreaking ceremony this morning, <laughs> the only thing people were talking about was how cool it felt because the lower humidity and the, uh, it was just a very pleasant morning. Let's see if we can get another day like this today, tomorrow. I like it. <laughs> John Holder joins us now in the EAN Weather Center to tell us what we can expect. John? Mike and Katie, it will be a repeat tomorrow of what we had today, but temperatures are going to be back in the 90s. We'll have a complete forecast for all of East Alabama next. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. After all the intense heat we've had across East Alabama today, temperatures actually a little bit below the average, 88 for the high today. You combine that with the low humidity and dew point values, and it felt a little bit like fall at times across East Alabama. 69 for the low this morning, again, a little bit below the average. The record high temperature, 100, back during that big heat wave that we had in 1980. The record low at 53 degrees, and the sunrise and sunset times remain the same. 542 the sunrise tomorrow morning, and 756 your sunset tonight. Weather on your street tonight. It's going to be clear and cooler. We haven't used that terminology in a while. If you're out on Pitts Avenue in the Sachs area of Aniston, get ready for clear skies tonight. About 66, you combine that with low humidity and dew point values, and it is going to feel refreshing when you wake up tomorrow morning. As we head into tomorrow on your Thursday, it's another dry day. No chance of rain in the forecast. High temperatures getting back into the 90s, 92 for the high. Humidity and dew point values should still be on the low side 
side. So another pretty nice day coming up tomorrow. So Hood Road and Rainbow City, more of the same coming up tomorrow with temperatures about four or five degrees warmer than today in Etowah County and all across East Alabama. As we look ahead to the start of the weekend, Temperatures are going to be on the rise on Mountain Street in Heflin and Cleburne County. We're not only going to be in the 90s, we're going to be into the mid 90s by Friday. And for the weekend, we're headed to the upper 90s all across East Alabama, including in the city of Heflin. Seven day forecast for all of East Alabama. We stay dry for the next several days. Temperatures rising, as we said, 95 on Friday, 96 on Saturday. Next chance of rain is not coming into the forecast until Sunday afternoon. Even then, only a 20% chance of a shower. The heat rolls on the high at 96. And the early part of next week, again, not very many scattered showers and thunderstorms. Maybe a 20% chance on Monday, a 20% chance on Tuesday. High temperatures getting into the upper 90s. That will, means we'll be dealing with heat index values that will be in the low 100s by the latter part of the weekend and the early part of next week. And those 60s will be gone. We'll be right back into the 70s for nighttime lows all across East Alabama. Let's take a look at what we can expect for the rest of the month of July. This is going to take us all the way into the back half of the month. This is valid for July 17th through 23rd. And again, we're going to be looking at above average temperatures. We're going to be above average for the rest of the work week and into the weekend. And as we look ahead to next week and the week after that, it looks like temperatures are going to be above normal across most of the country, including right here in East Alabama and the entire Southeast as well. Summertime rolling on across the country. I'll be back here tomorrow morning, bright and early at 6 a.m. as we'll break down your Thursday forecast with your day at a glance. I'll be back here tomorrow night for EAN Local News as we'll begin looking at that weekend forecast for all of East Alabama. Right now it's sports time. Name of Pitt spending some time at Atala today at another 7-on-7 seven seven camp, so to speak. He's got the details right now in sports. Name of Thanks, John. Etowah High School today hosted Ohatchee in Pleasant Valley for an OTA. Etowah football is entering year number one under new head coach Scott Peavy. Coach Peavy led Welburn to the playoffs twice, led Asheville to the playoffs, led Madison County to the playoffs four times while making the semifinals twice. Coach is coming to Etowah from Harrelson County, where he led Harrelson County to the playoffs many different years in the state of Georgia. Coach looks to bring his winning traditions back to Etowah. Etowah went 3-8 last season. They lost in the first round of the state playoffs to West Morgan. Coach Peavy is Etowah's fourth head coach in four years. Etowah returns Jamison's system at quarterback, but the question for Etowah will be who outside of the quarterback position steps up for the Blue Devils. Etowah will compete in Class 4A Region 6, which consists of Etowah, Alexandria, Anniston, Asheville, Cherokee County, Hoax Bluff, Oneonta, and White Plains. We talked with Coach Peavy, who talked about hosting the OTA and what he learned about his team today. Well, it was a great day. You know, we, we, have, we had a couple teams here that are well coached, and their coaches do a great job, and we're excited that we could host them here. And, um, you know, got a ton of work in, and Coach Nix is, is, is really a stickler with that clock. And, and, you know, we got tons of reps in because he, he does such a good job with that clock. So I thought it was a fantastic day. Ohatchee is entering year number three under head coach Chris Finley. Coach Finley has led Ohatchee to the playoffs in one of his two seasons with the Indians. Ohatchee missed the playoffs last season after finishing the season at 5-5. Five and five. Coach is looking to run a different offense this season that he believes should translate to winning success for Ohatchee. Ohatchee returns quarterback Jake Robertson, but the question mark for Ohatchee is injuries. Injuries have been Ohatchee's kryptonite the past two seasons. Ohatchee will look to stay healthy this season as the Indians have a senior-heavy team with 21 seniors. Ohatchee will compete in Class 3A Region 6, which consists of Ohatchee, Glencoe, J.B. Pennington, Locust Fork, Piedmont, Sachs, Welburn, Weaver, and Westbrook Christian. We talked with Coach Finley, who talked about the OTA today and what he figured out about his team. Uh, it was a good day of competition. It's always good. Uh, you know, we came off the 7-on-7 seven seven yesterday, but, you know, you don't get your linemen up there and let them uh, compete with anybody that's, that's not themselves. You kind of get kind of get tired of uh, competing against yourself every day. But it's, it's good to get out here with two good football teams, two teams I think will be really good, and, uh, and let everybody get some competition in. The final team today was the Pleasant Valley Raiders. The Pleasant Valley Raiders are entering year number 10 under head coach Jonathan Nix. Coach Nix and his coaching career has spent time at Asheville, Raglan, and Pleasant Valley. Pleasant Valley went 5-6 last season. The Raiders lost in the first round of the state playoffs to Pisgah. 
Pleasant Valley returns Braxton Solster at quarterback. It sounds weird, but the question mark for Pleasant Valley is how do they handle winning ways? The Raiders made the playoffs for the first time last season since 2010. Pleasant Valley will compete in Class 2A Region 7, which consists of Pleasant Valley, Cedar Bluff, Gaston, North Sand Mountain, Pisgah, Sand Rock, and Section. We talked with Coach Jonathan Nix, who talked about the OTA and what he learned about his team today. Hey, today was a great day. You know, this was uh, this was scheduled at Pleasant Valley, but uh, you know, uh, some. Some coaches had some bus issues, and so Coach Peavy is able to host it here, and, and we got everybody here. And so, uh, you know, I think it was a great day. You know, we started out with some group work uh, on offense and defense, and, and it's always to get co it's great to get coached by several people, and so that's what we was able to do with that, uh, to run our offense and defensive groups in three stations, and then we got a lot of good work on seven on seven, uh, and then they was able to come up and finish at the end with 11 on 11. So, you know, what I learned the most about our team is just, uh, you know, the little things like when when it's hot and you're tired can you still focus and that's what we want to continue to press on you know uh, what do you play like in the fourth quarter I mean anybody can start fresh but it's all about once you've been through a long day like this how do you finish strong are you getting the calls are you doing the little things right can you still go two plus two is four when you're at your worst shape and if you can then you can focus on other tasks also that's it for EA and local sports let's go back over to Mike and Katie Thanks for that update, Namath, and thank you for watching us today. You can find us here every weeknight on Facebook, and YouTube, and on a variety of sites, including our website, The Calhoun Journal, and Newsbreak. Just go to the platform of your choice and watch our news, sports, and weather coverage whenever it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here Thursday for your news on your schedule.